everybody so the footage you're watching right now is shot as you can see here with the xiaomi mi 11 ultra so this is the ultra wide angle camera i just got the phone about 30 minutes ago so i'm gonna take it out for a day out and about just like what i did with the oneplus 9 pro now one thing to note is when i first got this phone the battery was under 50 percent i believe it was at like 44 or 45 percent so I wanted to give it a quick charge up. So what I did is I plugged in a 67 watt charger that's included with the packaging, and I went to take a shower. I came out eight minutes later and the battery jumped up to 60 something percent, so yeah. Okay, so since this is my second time doing this vlog video, let me lay down some ground rules right now. So the footage you're watching right now, I shot with the ultra wide angle camera of the Mi 11 Ultra. It's probably gonna be marked somewhere in the upper right or left corner. And the sound you're hearing is coming directly from the mic too. Of course, there will be other footages in this video that shot with other camera, maybe like my Sony ZV-1 or something. So look for the little markers that says Mi 11 Ultra footage. Power stabilization down there. I just went up the stairs. Okay, so this is now video footage shot with the main camera of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. So it should be a pretty tight crop. This is the main camera, that 50 megapixel sensor. Dynamic range is looking excellent. Stabilization should be on point two. I'm just gonna walk pretty fast right now. Yeah, dynamic range is really good because right now at this part, you know, it's really harsh sunlight coming right here and you have shadows down on this side. So for example, this is how it looks on my Sony ZV-1 right now. You see how that shadow area is kind of dark. The lights are a little bit blown out. Let's start by keeping track of battery life. So we have 59% battery life right now and it is 1.50 p.m. Let's go over the hardware really quick. So we have a 6.8 inch OLED panel with a resolution of 1440 by 3200. So it's just like the Mi 11, it has a quad curved display, meaning the screen curves a little bit on the left and right, and also top and bottom side. It makes for a very comfortable in-hand feel. Now this is a little bit of a chunky board. The phone weighs 234 grams and measures 8.4 millimeter thick. It definitely is heavier than the OnePlus 9 Pro that I've been handling, but so far the hand still feels pretty comfortable in the hand. It doesn't feel as wide as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, for example. This camera bump, yeah, it is quite large, but I actually kind of like it because it allows me to prop my finger underneath it for additional support when I'm holding the phone. So the main camera, this is a 50 megapixel main sensor with a 1 over 1.12 inch image sensor size. So this is the largest image sensor size we've ever seen in a smartphone. Now I'm also excited about this secondary camera here. This is a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. So once again, just like the Vivo 60 Pro Plus, just like the OnePlus 9, just like the Oppo Find 3 Pro, you're getting an ultra wide angle camera that's very close in pixel count to the main camera. So that means there isn't that big of a drop off if you're taking photos of the main camera and then the ultra wide angle camera and you look at the two images side by side. And then you also have a 48 megapixel periscope zoom lens that offers five times optical zoom and digital zoom all the way up to 120 times. Okay, so now we have a ultra wide angle video with the S21 Ultra and ultra wide with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. I'm going down some stairs right now, so just to check out which one has better stabilization and maybe lighting. So I'm going downstairs right now. Okay, so now we're in this area called uh, Kamsheng Road. It is uh, one, of, in one, one again one of the outer territories of Hong Kong. I like coming here for Thai food and also just to get some peace and quiet because you know Hong Kong is usually loud as hell, right? And look at how empty and quiet it is. Again, impossible to find in center of Hong Kong. So you see, when you come out to these uh, kind of outer territories of Hong Kong, you see interesting houses that you would never see in central Hong Kong. So this is another one of those village houses. But it's painted in this interesting blue. Right now I'm shooting with the main camera and you can zoom in with the main camera too. So right now this is um 2x zoom right here. Let's go up to what's the max? Oh you think max of a 15x zoom. This is looking pretty sharp right now. A 
Okay, we're at five times zoom. This is using the periscope zoom lens, I can see. Let's back out to... Now this is ultra wide angle camera. So nice, you have a lot of focal versatility with the camera. Even mid video, you can switch from ultra wide angle camera all the way up to 10 times zoom. And the five times look pretty sharp to my eyes right now, at least from what I can see on the screen. Okay, so one of the cool areas about Camp Sharon Road is there are these fortresses built into the city. So these were built during the colonial times when um, people in Hong Kong were still trying to fight off the British. So this is a fortress that they built to try to fight off the British colonizers. Yeah, obviously that didn't really work out too well, but these villages are kind of private, so I can't really get to um, get in there. They'll yell at me. Like, so this is where the zoom camera comes in handy. So I can zoom in five times right now and get a clear shot at the entrance. I can even go 10 times to get a picture of this dude. And if I want, I can go deeper and look at the brick work of this fortress. And look at the side. You can go inside the village if you want. See, so you can see, I can already see this sign right now that says, don't come in, tourists. Okay, let's test out this Mi 11 Ultra against some harsh backlights. So right now, directly against the sun. Don't go ultra wide angle camera. Okay, let's check battery life right now. So it is now 2.43 p.m. So I've been out for about an hour and we're down to 43% battery life. So um, let's expect that the battery life is draining quite fast. But again, that's, this is because I have 120 Hertz refresh rate on with WQHD plus resolution. Right now, it's a really sunny day. I'm gonna step directly under the sun and I can still see it. I mean, it might not show in the camera right now, but I can still see the screen pretty well even under direct harsh sunlight and this is the s21 ultra i would say the mi 11 ultra and s21 ultra screen are about equally bright to my eyes right now so one thing i haven't really talked about yet is this second screen on the back of the mi 11 ultra so i was quite excited when i first saw the second screen because i thought that means i would be able to film myself shooting videos and see um, the exact framing see the viewfinder but unfortunately that is not the case this second screen will show the viewfinder for still photo. So that means if you want to take selfies with this main camera system, you can do so. But it will not uh, light up for video. So that means if you're shooting video, you won't be able to see yourself with that screen. This screen can also do other things like show you the time, obviously, and notifications, and also control music playback. So it works with third party apps too. I was playing Spotify earlier and you can see the second screen Let's show off the Spotify controls. You can play pause track or fast forward, skip ahead, just stuff like that. Okay, so we have another village right here. This one looks a little bit friendlier. It doesn't say do not enter. So I'm gonna go in. Let's hope I don't get killed. The size is so large, there's a very natural creamy bokeh anytime you take a picture of something up close. You don't have to turn on portrait mode, just shoot with the main camera, point and shoot and you get these really nice looking natural depth of field bokeh. So this is a hipster coffee shop here. I've wanted to come here multiple times but every single time it's packed and there's a line so... Okay, time to check the battery life really quick. So it is... 3.34 p.m. we were down to 30% battery life. You know, this is a problem of every phone right now that gives you 120 hertz and WQHD+. You can, of course, lower resolution to 1080p or lower your refresh rate to 60. But don't do the latter because 120 hertz on MIUI looks really damn smooth. It's aesthetically very pleasing. So keep the 120 and lower resolution to 1080p if you need um, if you know you're going to be out all day and need long battery life. If you're able to afford a midday top up, then you don't have to worry at all because this phone's 67 watt charging is super fast. Okay, I'm back in my apartment. It is dark now, so I'm going to turn off all the lights and just 
test the camera performance in really low light performance because the Mi 11 Ultra should excel here. It does after all have the largest image sensor size around. So we're putting on the Mi 11 Ultra right now. So you can see my messy bed actually, which you can't see with the human eye, but in the photo, you can see it pretty clearly. And look at the balance. It actually found balance outside that window quite well. Okay, now I'm gonna bring up the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'm gonna leave night mode on. Okay, so after having examined the photos taken by the Mi 11 Ultra on the camera for the last 45 minutes on my computer, I can see that this camera is pretty legit. So it does take in a lot of light, obviously, but also I really like that natural depth of field that you get whenever you point the camera at something closer. And video stabilization, whether it's a main camera or ultra wide angle camera is really on point. Even at night where previous Xiaomi phones was stumble for a little bit in video stabilization. That is now not the case anymore, at least not with the main camera. Everything looks sharp and vibrant. And so one thing I noticed when I shot video with the S21 Ultra and the Mi 11 Ultra is that the S21 Ultra has to compensate a lot by artificially brightening up the scene, by dialing up the ISO. That's why you get so much uh, noise and grain. Whereas the Mi 11 Ultra's night video looks pretty natural and normal and with proper dynamic range and contrast all that. But of course, this is not a review by any means. I've only been using the phone for about seven, eight hours, but we know this phone has one of the better zoom lenses out there. And it has probably the best main camera right now and an ultra wide angle camera that's probably in the top two or three range too. So we have a really nice package all around. And of course, a really nice screen and design too. I do worry this phone's slightly heavy to use over the long term with one hand, but I'll just have to see about that in my long-term review. I'll definitely have more on this phone in the next few days, in the coming week. So make sure to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews if you want to know more about the Mi 11 Ultra. But this is it for my day one, day in the life vlog, first look at the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. This thing is um, a beast. Thanks for watching.